How We Know the Bible is True, a video by Copernicus. That's me! Ask a Christian and they'll tell you everyone knows that God exists. Some are just being stubborn about it. After all, we have such elegant proof in the form of... Behold, the atheist's nightmare. No, not bananas, the Bible. That's because God knows everything about everything. We know very little about very little. It was whispered down from the heavens and transcribed by humans that we might know the will of our Creator. As such, it is perfect and free from error. That's how we know it's divine, and a single contradiction or error would prove otherwise. Oh, but wait! There are hundreds of errors and contradictions to be found. Note that Fundays and creationists will do their best to justify or downplay them, yet they exist. Plenty of links are in the sidebar for the curious. Um, I'll just cite a single example from Genesis. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. Now, note that the lesser light is the moon, which is not a light, it only shines from reflected sunlight and the line. He also made the stars gives no indication that stuff outside the solar system, you know, the rest of the known universe even exists. Uh, there's no mention that the sun is a star, that stars are distant suns, or anything to indicate a very basic cosmological concept. We come now to the metaphor that illustrates why we know the Bible is nothing more than a religious text, not unlike dozens or hundreds of others concocted by imaginative but ignorant people. A kindergarten class is asked to draw a picture of the mountains however they see fit. The students, you know, five and six-year-olds, representing humans, are all equally bad at drawing. Now, secretly, a professional artist, i.e. God, is among them. Now, we know the relative difference between the sum of human knowledge and omniscience, so we should be able to detect which among the students is the professional, right? Well, maybe. I mean, here's little Susie's painting. Hi, Mom! Here's uh, Timmy sliding down a hill. A uh, photorealistic drawing of the Catskill Mountains. Billy the Bully made a volcano. Wait, what the fuck? Go back one. Oh, gee, it wasn't so hard after all. So it's pretty evident that renowned painter Thomas Cole could easily outshine a bunch of kids with limited skill, experience, and motor skills. And we can do it easily. Now, it begs the question, why doesn't the Bible stand out like the Thomas Cole painting among the kindergartner art? Consider how many people would pick the prose painting for accuracy and skill above the childish works. Nearly everyone, except for maybe Timmy, Susie, and Billy, might pick their own, but at least 99% of the world would agree upon the most accurate work. So, why is only a third of the world Christian? Is it because people's detection skills just aren't up to scratch, or is it that the Bible is just another new painting? Obviously, I posit the latter. As some are bound to disagree, let me quash a few obvious objections. Somewhere, hopefully, this video will interrupt some holy glossolalia long enough for a Christ puncher to shout, Oh, but it does stand out! Jesus is the Lord! Obviously, this is not the case. As I said, nearly every human on earth who ever took one look at the Bible would say, Holy honey buns, this is amazing! and tell all their friends they need to check this out. Since that's not the case, I will read to you the verbal response I once gave to a fundy who thought they had just punctured my argument with this argument. So a book, alleging that plants were created before sunlight, that giants once roamed the earth, that Cain was able to populate a city without a wife, and that the earth was once covered with water so deep that the summit of Everest was under 20 feet of ocean, but a dude and his family were able to preserve millions of species of animals and plants by taking them all on a boat for 40 days plus a year, stands out as the evident word of the creator of the universe. Enough said. Secondly, people will object and say that people back then could not have comprehended the universe except metaphorically. To that, I say bullshit. At least God could have put Genesis in some sensible order, dropped a few hints about the outside universe, uh, or say Neptune, the Heliopause, or the Oort Cloud, ETC. Obviously, people had to be literate before the Bible would work as a book. A smart person could use a dummy to transcribe the collected works of Shakespeare with nothing more than letter-by-letter -letter dictation. See? To thine own self be true, any idiot could have written it down one letter at a time. The Bible was apparently not written down this way, as we find more and more problems, both morally and scientifically, as time goes on, not less. Either the people writing decided they were smarter than God, and God let them get away with it, why, or the people just made it up themselves. Now, regarding length or the charge that God could only 
fit so much into his holy book, I say bollocks, read Leviticus, and tell me those chapters wouldn't be better spent talking about health, science, or technology. And why would a deity want or care about some animals getting roasted and then not eaten? If someone offered to burn a goat for me to show me appreciation, I wouldn't want that. I mean, cook it and eat it, that's fine, but what's the point otherwise? Secondly, animal sacrifice was retconned by the animal sacrifice of Jesus in the New Testament, so why leave all this crap in the Pentateuch? Thirdly, why not make more than one damn book if the word of God is so important? We have thousands of books on metallurgy, but only one text from God. Mm hmm Now, regarding metaphors, I will let the esteemed non-stamp collector handle this one as I've yet to see it illustrated better. Hey, I like that idea. Like, I could drop some hint about energy being mass multiplied by the square of the speed of light, or accurately describe the structure of the solar system. But actually, no, I needn't bother. See, I've already put in the scriptures that the earth hangs upon nothing over empty space. And let's face it, I mean, how is that not obviously an irrefutably divinely revealed scientific knowledge about the nature of the universe? Well, you also told them that the earth sits upon pillars. No, no, that one's just metaphorical. Oh, and the other one's not? No, the other one's scientific fact. It's, you know, it's hanging in, in space. Yeah, well, how are people meant to tell the difference? Well, the ones that are correct are facts, and the ones that aren't correct are just metaphor, of course. <sighs> just making excuses. There is no excuse for believing in talking snakes and burning bushes. Now, I know myself a human better than anyone, and I consider myself relatively intelligent, though certainly I am far below the smartest person, and even the smartest person would seem retarded to an omniscient being. Using what I've learned from science, literature, and psychology, I could do a better job explaining the origin of the universe than the mashed-up, half-witted parable of Adam and Eve. No one can know if a god or gods exist because it's a non-falsifiable belief. Through scrutiny and critical thinking, we can easily say that an omnipotent being had nothing whatsoever to do with the writing of the Bible. Every believer has their own doubts, their own problems and misgivings with their faith. If something doesn't make sense to you, it might be because you're not smart enough to see it, or it might be dumb and you just don't want to call your god a retard. Intelligence is evident in human creations, not just as an absolute, but with varying degrees. While the Bible is an important work of literature, it is just that. A work of literature. By people, for people. Millions of people do not look at the Bible and think, yes, it's the word of God, but oh great, some more goddamn gravy from the religious crockpot. My only advice, and I say this with all sincerity now, is not to trust others when it comes to what you want to be or what you think God wants you to be. Use your head if something doesn't make sense or seems weird or cruel or just bugs you for some reason. Don't ignore it. Above all, trust yourself, your brain, your intellect, and if you can muster the courage to really examine your beliefs, you might find a little more rust under the hood than you imagined. Either you'll live to see your faith grow stronger, or you'll be able to cast it aside without regret. Huzzah!